Hello everybody and welcome to a new season of Spoiler Warning. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at Mirror's Edge. Uh, I'm Ritz Garn, uh, Josh is in the pilot seat this season. Hello. And uh, with us today are Chris and Glitch. Let's do this. Has now, he Josh, ever not been in the pilot seat? <laughs> now, Josh, Once or twice. you actually... You've been pulling for us to do this game for a long time. Uh, why like don't you tell six us why? years? Because uh, this game is really cool. That's a great uh, reason. More, more specifically, this game like was from the sort of weird experimental phase of uh, Electronic Arts back in 2008. Uh, this is this is a dice game, believe it or not. <laughs> that weird and, uh, phase where EA tried for a period of four energy. months. Dirty and dangerous, right. But alive and, and it's a game that's all about free running yeah. and first person it's platforming, and it actually kind of does that pretty the well. Came slowly at first. And they mostly this, this game has some problems, but but there's there's Except some real them. cool gems it here. I, I have a question immediately already. Um, so, back when this game came out, was this sort of graphics uh, for the intro, was that sort of like... No, nobody liked this. ...janky and weird? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's funny. Um, obvious that this was cost I wouldn't measure. imagine people would like this. But this reminds me a lot of the, the style of the comic books for, like, Overwatch, and those are wildly popular. Yeah, I was just like, thinking I don't, that's funny. I actually don't hate <laughs> this style as much as a lot of people seem to, but, like, it's clear that this was not the way it was probably initially intended. In fact, I think I remember reading something about, like, they were going to do in-engine cutscenes, and I guess ran out of time and ended up doing this sort of weird graphic novel-esque thing. It's weird, too, because these cutscenes we're looking at here are a lot less colorful, as you can see, than the actual game. Yeah, that's that's one thing about this game. Uh, you know, we might have some mean things to say as we come to the middle in the later part, but one thing nobody can dispute is that this game is gorgeous. No, it's super pretty. Oh, how did you teleport Left from that roof over crouch. there to I here? I forgot about that. Yeah, if you if you have no interest in the kind of hokey narrative of this game, or hang on a minute, you know, I'm gonna. You're maybe kind of wondering uh, what we got to have to say about gameplay. You know, we got some things to talk about, but if nothing else, you can watch this whole series on mute. Avoid listening to our stupid voices and still just have something really serene and relaxing to look at. Uh, specifically, Josh falling off a building over and over again. Yeah. We, sh we should have made bets before we started how long it would take him to fall off a building. Four minutes and 38 I'm gonna seconds. Say... Oh man, you took mine. Uh, I'm gonna say uh, five minutes and fifty-six seconds. <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> well, I price this right at you. <laughs> Dang it! You, <laughs> Josh, you suck at this. I'm actually good at this game, but giving you a little glimpse uh -huh. of uh, welcome back. falling to your death in the tutorial. Uh huh. You you meant These to do that. These skin toads eh? actually looked pretty good, and to the extent they still look pretty good. Oh yeah, no, like if game. you compare this to Bioshock, which came out just a year earlier. I mean, the game's gorgeous. There, there's really no denying how pretty this is, and it, it seems like a really rare case okay, where it's, was... it's mostly our... Oh god, Josh. <laughs> we're it's been a while since I we're played this game, for betting that high. That's, that's the <laughs> problem with waiting six years to play this game, is that you've forgotten how to play yeah. it. Um, but I, it, I have it, to say, uh, go ahead, Chris. I was gonna say it's a mix of it's a mix of art design, but also uh, technical achievement. Like it's a really, really nice blend of both. Um, it's not one of those games that's entirely driven by art design, um, because it's got this really high fidelity aesthetic. Like it looks like it could be a real city, but it's just like a, a real city that has this very strict art code of how they paint and build the buildings. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, you know, they get a lot of little details right, too. Where, like, this looks like a real city. When you get down to the details level, where there's just, like, this weird appliance. What is this for? Like, the paint buckets. Like, the, just, like, builder's tools lying around. The pallets. You know, it, it, it looks as messy and kind of under construction as a real city. But it's it still gets across this gorgeous, gorgeous art style. 
one thing I love about the game too is it knows you're going to be spending a lot of time face first against a wall. So all the walls have these really gorgeous detail textures and bump maps. So like when you're shimmying up a pipe, you're not just looking at a tube of red, but like you're actually seeing all the imperfections in the metal of the tube. Um, it's a it's a little thing, but it, it makes it makes staring at a pipe really nice. I also think that there's kind of a genius in making all of the surfaces white and subject to a huge amount of bloom. Uh, not just from a gameplay perspective, you know, where it, it kind of creates the sense of like a unified level, but also because it makes, it, it lets them cheat a lot. Like, these look like real buildings, like real buildings. Like this could be a video coming through this, if the stream quality. And they didn't have access to a lot of technology to make that happen. You know, it, just being that, that this game has been out for a long time. Uh, but in a sense, they kind of get away with it because, like, they they don't have to portray a lot of details since a lot of the details are naturally oh, right. would be sort of lost in the bloom. Yeah. Also, by keeping it monochrome, I think your brain kind of invents a lot of the details that otherwise might not actually be there. It's a really neat trick. It like, by having great, it be monochrome... So. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I, that was it, that was it. Merc wants me to run you through some sparring. You know how he is. You yeah, ready? so one of the things that they did to, um... Oh, what the heck? That was on. Uh -oh. Game all tab for no reason. She wants to give you a double high five. <laughs> give her a double high five, Josh. That's not a double high five. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's some weird failure, like the the controls in this game, especially when it oh, comes to Josh. combat. Are okay, a little bit no, I I know why you're janky. failing there. She was going for the down low, and you were too slow. It's a common rookie mistake. <laughs> Thanks, Rods. Right, so. Oh no. Let's run through some <clears throat> so so speaking of uh, controls, and you're kind of like a little way through the tutorial. I don't I don't actually know how long the tutorial is, but uh, how, how does it feel outside of combat? With Pretty the, good. the the Don't hit Celeste. <laughs> um, wow, that was. It, it feels pretty good. Uh, combat in this game is pretty legendarily bad, um, and make is the worst part of the game overall. Um, but the movement yeah. works. The movement feels pretty good. Yeah, I, I if, actually want to say that I don't think the combat is as bad as everyone says it is. I think that it's misplaced more than anything. But I, I, I'll, we'll get to that later on. I think. This feels like the kind of game where, uh, at least if I was playing it, I would avoid combat, even if it was, okay, like, right in my way, and, and just kind of run around Oh, sure, it. yeah. Viable 95% of the time. Let me know when you're ready to get the game going. actually, Very I like occasionally the, the game you have seems, to engage in combat. The game seems mostly indifferent to whether you fight enemies or not. It's possible for you to fight them. You could jump around, ninja kicking them, disarming them, even shooting them. Those options exist yeah. because Faith has access to those options. She knows how to fight people, uh, but often it's really just not, there's no point in doing so. And it's easier just to get a, a, away from them. And that actually really immersed me in the character, I think. So, can I complain about the title? Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Um, so we saw in the intro that they're setting up this sort of two worlds thing that never really comes to fruition, <laughs> um, at all. Uh, the, the game implies that, uh, Faith is a runner for, a, a, an organization that basically does illicit messages, um, between both the super rich and the underground resistance, and that never materializes and we never really see the resistance. This very quickly will become a sort of neo-noir story rather than anything to do with uh, the yeah. evil corporations. This becomes um, a fucking detective a story real damn quick and it's... And it's I don't weird know what they're doing with the story. There's all this yeah, vestigial yeah. stuff of that original right. thing though, because that's why it's called The Mirror's Edge, because uh, Faith references it in the opening uh, animation yeah. where it's like she runs between the two worlds on the mirror's edge of, of the dark reflection of the, of the you know, uh, of, of the society that thinks it's all perfect. Um, it's bizarre to me that, that they, they've left all that stuff in. Um, yeah. But the actual plot is completely well, different. But they didn't want to change all of the, the title on all of the marketing material. 
Uh, so they had to keep it yeah, in. Yeah, like, like the Elder Scrolls <laughs> Arena. <laughs> which yeah. is like the er example of, well, fuck it, we've already printed the boxes. We're calling it Arena. Exactly. It's literally the opposite of the Arena at this point. There's no Arena in the game. Uh, but fuck it, we'll just write or come up with something. Okay, are you sure? I'll have to come up with something to put in the intro about it, like the realm being an arena. That'll sound really awkward. It'll be so distracting for me personally that I might accidentally write the wrong name for the emperor twice. Just do it. <laughs> Did that really happen? Uh, yeah, he's like Uriel Sept of the Seventh one time, like the fifth another time. <laughs> I can't believe he well, landed the, that. The That's manual like the first... also. Or, or the intro refers to the character as either, like, re uses the character's Colin. name to both refer to the player character and his father. Yes, who's maybe not your father also, maybe he's just the captain of the guard. Yeah. It's that game. Yep. I wrote a series on this on 20 Sided, uh, if you haven't read it already. Anyway, um... <laughs> Speaking of series that I've written, uh, I before I Whoa, knew hello. anything about the circumstances, that's a great oh. moment. Uh, wow, <laughs> I've actually never seen anyone die there. That's a wonderful Fail moment. To well, wall run for some. Thanks for joining I've us for the new season. I've never seen them fire that fast. <laughs> anyway, hang on. I also like the idea of like four cops standing around, like like talking and one of them's insisted that they come the into this fuck? back ass hallway like and look at this wall and they're like George why the right, hell are we so in this this hallway looking at this wall this game <laughs> just keeps alt tabbing randomly no I don't think it crashed let me double check to see that like any of this like that our footage is still good I hope it's not all wasted okay folks we had to play some catch up but Fortunately, that's the one thing that this game is built around, so... Oh, look at you sneaking, Ninja. Too good for the stairs. Little bit. Anyway, uh, so one never thing... Having... Need it. I wonder, it is, does it get disorienting at all? It's kind of disorienting to watch Surprisingly sometimes. not, in my experience. Not really, no. Yeah. The stream isn't helping because we're like, getting pauses. Yeah, that, that that definitely doesn't help. But it almost feels like like in first person it might be too um, uh, up close. Like like you'll I saw you run up against a wall to jump behind you, and that really threw my brain for a loop. That's about I mean, the most complicated move you get. Are. No. Oh, oh man, can you imagine? Okay, okay, can we? Thank you. I like, like I like how you're slowing down every time you jump. Oh yeah, you kicked that guy in the face. Man, that cop looked like a douchebag. Not not like you know like a douchebag police officer, but just like a regular douchebag. A regular douchebag. Like gel hair, wrap around sunglasses. What the heck? I think I just accidentally skipped a cutscene or something. I did actually accidentally skip a cut. Hang on, let me see if I dying will fix that. I like. I like how you skip the cutscene and those guys spawned in almost civilian. Uh, oh, can I just say pose, that falling off a building in this game is awesomely pants shitting? Hey, throw me the bag. This is the only mission where you're like running messages or anything. Like, yep, this is last we see spoilers. Ever. Yeah. Some dedicated and somewhat sadistic member of the team spent a long time making sure that falling off a building was as scary as possible. Oh. You gotta get off that roof, babe. Don't care how you do it, just Oh, this it. helicopter jump. Oh, there we go. First try. Like, I, I love it, like the the way like the, the almost the train noise Nonsense. kicks in as you hit the ground. And that, that, like, seeing yourself in the window thing, I'm pretty sure that's only there because for, like, because this was for the trailer. Because at this point, you already know what your character looks like. Nothing. Was that helicopter part of the the rebellion, or no, just the No, that was the police helicopter, helicopter that showed up. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say. Also, I like how they're like, oh, she went over to another building, I guess it's time to go home. So a point I was gonna get into uh, before the crash happened, that was Josh's fault, is that... To... Sort of early on. I may and... be able to edit it so they don't know there's a crash, Rudd Skarm, but I guess not. No. Uh, you can edit out the crash. 
the crash anyway, that we're going to talk about the rest of the episode. <laughs> the point <laughs> is, uh, I wrote a series of posts when I was like 18 years old about how much I hated the story in this game, and I haven't really seen the story since. Uh, and I'm kind of curious, because in a lot of senses I've changed my critical perspective, and I, I really want to see how annoying it is now versus how annoyed it made me when I was an edgy teenager. So, I have the... Oh, sorry, go ahead, Chris. You haven't no, go ahead. Yet. I, I, got, I got time. Don't chuck that pizza. Well, I, I have, sure. I've been, like, yeah, I know. I'm now playing this game yeah. after having played Mirror's Edge Catalyst, the, like, reboot from last year, and I feel like I'm more generous towards this game's story after having seen that game's story where they actually did the whole you're a runner for the rebellion and that's a big deal thing and totally messed it up anyway. Yeah, like, yeah in I ways can see that. that are actually worse than this game. Mark. You off? Just get on comms and track. So, so I remember everybody... The... Okay, I, I, go you ahead, know, Red Chris, Scarn. you go first. No, 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 you go first. I, I was just going to say, I remember everybody com uh, comparing this stuff to the progressive insurance ad animations back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Almost there. Well, anytime you'd like to um, what was that chick's name? Aaron? Feel free. I, I really don't want to know have that information. Uh, okay. I'm gonna uh, but... <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I seem to recall the thing that pissed me off the most about it is just that it portrays, like, your participation in the Resistance and kind of the, the criminality of this dystopia in a really vague way, where, like, all we see of this society being dystopian is there's a riot, and then the riot is suppressed by uh, riot cops, and... Well, you I'm, know that's bad, because there's no riots in real life that happen in America, so... This is clearly yeah. a terrible dystopian future. I, I think I'm a lot less... Okay, I, I don't want to get too much into, like, the politics of police brutality. Uh, just because it's not really germane too much to this conversation, but... I guess the point is... Wait, where is there's it? a okay, huge right. gap where Faith's emotional arc is in this game. Or her kind of her hatred of this society that leads her to lash out against it is. And... I don't think that they could do that. I don't think that they could just leave, take this as red, that since the society is clean, it's bad. Um, I, I will I say, though, that, there, uh, there is there one little go. touch that we just saw that I love about the, this evil society, and that is that all the plants are white. Like, like the Why? this evil government takes... Well, because it's an aesthetic choice, but it also shows an attempt by uh, whatever, whatever yeah. authority and control uh, that, that, that wants order is so anal about it that they will bleach the plants white um and that, I, and that's I just, a great like that. touch that that supports it really well it's like um it's like it's like all the little touches in like fury road that like tell you that this is a weird cult society but you still need a morton joe on the can like yelling about how people don't deserve water to get the full picture, and this game doesn't really have that. Like, right now, we're learning about a conspiracy, but the thing about this conspiracy is it's only a couple politicians against some other politicians. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't really it doesn't, have a lot to yeah. do with... Also, if you're gonna go like, noir, it's, it's weird to choose an, a, a super bright, vibrant, all-white, colorful city as your noir setting. It's bad. It's badass I choice. I actually like, really respect it. Yeah, and they could have done it really well. Don't you read the news? Um, so this is this is Robert Pope. He's a friend of ours, I guess, and a friend of our sister who is a cop. So Are you that bugs get me. For a murder? No, she is. Well, that, that that's part of what bugs me is is like, what is their relationship like? I, like we know they're friends because they're siblings. But like, how does how does cop sister justify having a runner sister? Like, there there shouldn't yeah. that be a source of tension. And like, how straight up illegal are the runners anyway? That's never made really there, clear. There is some tension here, but there's just so much work that could be being done. Okay, now famously, the problem with the writing of this game is that it was a, it was a paint job. Uh, they brought in, yeah. uh, I think, Rihanna Pratchett to write the story yeah, after the Rihanna game was Pratchett. pretty much finished. Uh, the levels, everything was finished. 
Uh, and I sympathize because that's I I don't know how much better anyone can really do under the circumstances. Uh, but this this the story as it is doesn't really work, and it's clear that that was never really a developer's intention. And I guess I just feel like the gameplay is so. The gameplay is really good, and if the game had nothing but that, it would be fine. But quite a lot of time is spent with, like, these cutscenes, and, like, with, like, listening to your, your NPCs talk to you, and then there's the animated cutscenes, uh, that gives so much context to what you're doing. And if you skip the, these cutscenes, often you find yourself standing not sure which way you should be running in the middle of a hallway with a bunch of cops coming out behind you. You know what this reminds me about, or reminds me of that I've played lately? Um, Scanner Somber. Like, it is a visually stunning game with some great gameplay mechanics, and the story really does almost actively work against everything else that's going on. Yeah. Ah, that's not what I wanted to do. It's also not what I wanted to do, but okay. <laughs> Make them laugh! Make them I... laugh! <laughs> Like, I'm, I'm noticing the controls of this game are subtly different from those in Catalyst, and it's really throwing me off. Okay, that's a good excuse. Stick with that one.